In this video, we're going to resize and deprime these cases and prep them for further reloading. Guy Miner here from UltimateReloader.com. In this second video in our series on basic rifle reloading, we're going to get into resizing the brass, depriming the brass, and then further prepping it by trimming it. Then we'll be ready to reload it in another video. I'm going to start with introducing Lyman's Victory Press. This is an O-ring press. It's also pretty compact and it has an on-press priming system. It's a nice little press and I've enjoyed working with it. We're going to show you some more details on that later. Our dies, our dies are pretty ancient. I've had these a long time. They're in a Hornady box and that's what they came in with a $22 price tag on them and they're marked Pacific Durachrome. So you know they're from a while back. You know what? They still work great. Basically, just buy quality dies, take care of them, and they're going to take care of your brass and your rifle for a very long time. I'm using once fired federal brass that was fired in my rifle. That's a really good way to do it. Uh, picking up the range brass sometimes is a problem. Buying some of that once fired brass from army surplus or whatever, that machine gun brass mostly, a lot of times those very generous chambers in the machine guns lead to a huge resizing chore that is more difficult than it needs to be. We're going to get into that and then before we're done with this video, we're going to trim this brass on our Lyman trimmer. Okay, we're going to start with putting a shell holder in the ram, move it up here to where we've got some clearance snap it in, a little snap ring holds it right in place. So there's your shell holder. Make sure you're using the right one for your cartridge case. Take out my uh, ancient old dies, Pacific Duochrome they're marked. You know they've been around a while. And we're going to screw them in, but how far to screw them in? That's an interesting question. And that's going to determine how much we resize our brass and also if we're going to be able to get that primer to pop out properly. Now, I like to use Imperial Sizing Dye Wax. There are a lot of different lubes out there you can use. There's spray-on lubes. There's a lot of different kinds of lubes. This is just a favorite of mine. Also, don't forget to brush inside the case mouth. That seems to make it a lot easier for me for that expander ball to pull up through the case neck and get that properly expanded. Now, a couple of reasons we want to do this here while we're, while we're depriming this is and, and trim later is because while we're doing the sizing that is where some of the neck stretching happens. Probably quite a bit of it. We insert, run on up in there and it's not enough. I'm not resizing that enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to screw this in, pull this out, and what I want to do, this is a good guidance, is you want to get to where it, the top of the shell holder is contacting the bottom of the die, pull it down just a little bit, give it a little more of a turn there, and we want to try and get that cam over. There, there. I don't know if you can see that in our video. I hope so. You want to hit it and then give it just a little bit more. That should be real close to right. Now, our lock ring, tighten that down. By the way, when you tighten these down on the press like this, sometimes it can be a bit of a bear to get it out. We'll see about that later. All right. Got my case here. Let's try it again. See if I can get that primer out and get it properly resized. Oh yeah. Primer's out. It's in our little catch bin. And that has been resized. Now, with the Imperial, you don't have to use very much lube. So a lot of times I just wipe it off right now. You can put it back in the tumbler. If you want to do it that way, that's fine. That is all personal preference for that sort of thing. So, get into a little rhythm here. Do the inside case neck. Just a tiny bit of Imperial on there. Run it on up in there. Nice. And we've got another case 
resized and deprimed. Got case lube off. Inside the neck, a little bit of lube on it. Nice and easy. No need to hurry any of this stuff. If anything doesn't feel right, like you start putting it up in there and it stops, you may not have lubed the case or not lubed it enough. Try to back out of there because it's real easy to get a brass case stuck inside a die. If that happens, there are ways of getting it out, and if you can't figure it out, uh, there are tools, but if you can't make that happen, you can send it back to the die manufacturer and they will remove it for you. Very good about that sort of thing. They like to take care of us reloaders. I mentioned about the uh, primers landing in your catch thing. That may not seem a uh, may not seem like a very big point, but it is, especially if you tend to wander around your house or your reloading area barefoot once in a while. The stepping on spent primers is no fun. Now let's do one more. Get inside the case neck. Just a little dab of Imperial on there. Doesn't take much. There we go. We've got five of them, all resized, deprimed. Next, we'll get into case trimming and a little bit further brass prep. We're going to move on into trimming. That's a real important step. I didn't realize this when I was a young guy and it started out hand loading, and I did not realize that my case necks were stretching. Didn't know about that. And I tried to rechamber another chamber another cartridge in my bolt action, and it wouldn't fit. And I had to really cram it down. Of course, that resulted in overpressure, and I learned a lot of things in a hurry on that. Um, so trim your cases. Got to keep them trimmed. Your manual will tell you the specified length, which in the case of 308 is 2.015 inches. And these are measuring in at, now that we have resized them, these are measuring in at around 2.03, 2.027. So they're a little long, which is not unexpected. Have here one that has been trimmed, and it's at 2.012, which is close enough to 2.015 for me. So that's what we're going to use that to help us set this up and set everything up properly. We need to first put in our 30 caliber pilot. That goes in here into the cutter head. Tighten that down. You can see why I keep a set of Allen keys with me on my loading bench. Now, here's why it's important to have these deep prime because there's a detent ball in this that helps hold the case properly and a set of jaws. So once we've done that, move the pilot on into the case neck, tighten it down, and now we know where this needs to be set. There's two settings on this. this is the coarse, and we've got that down, and then we can tighten the fine one down. Good. Get the set screws. Make sure everything's nice and snug. Now we're set to go ahead and trim these. In it goes. Get the pilot in there. Now, something that I've found over the years is that if I get all crazy and push hard on this, I can really make these cases vary in their overall length when I'm done. So I don't do that. I'll just go ahead and do it like that. Now, hand tool. Lyman makes a great little hand tool. 
We're going to use this VLD and we are going to chamfer the inside of the case mouth and then we're going to go ahead and deburr the outside. It doesn't take much. Let's see where we wound up with this one. 2.012. Very nice. Same as our host case there, our model case. So it's good when you get them right there where you want them to save one of those and it will really speed up setting up your trimmer in the future, especially if you're going from one cartridge to another to another. Like this is nowhere near proper for 30 6 or 375 H&H or whatever. Um, but it's perfect for the 308. Chamfer, deburr, It's a little bit longer, 2.019. I'm going to put it in there and just take just a skosh off that. There we go. That looks like about a skosh, doesn't it? Yes, 2.017. I'll live with that. Going just a little bit under also helps because they're going to stretch the next time they're fired and resized. So if you go under just a little bit what the uh, what the book says, they can do that. You can fire them once or twice more before you need to do all this. I know guys who trim every time that they shoot and reload. That's fine. Um, I don't usually do that and I've done real well over the years, but now we've got these done that way. This is not done with us though. I was so impressed when I found out that there are four more little tiny tools inside of this one. And one of those is perfect for cleaning out the primer pockets. There we go. Helps put it in the right way. We're not trying to ream these out or anything. We're just trying to clear some of that carbon out of there, make them look a little cleaner. And you can see it for yourself. Starts out pretty, pretty carboned up in there. You just go in there and give it a few turns, and it scrapes that carbon away, makes things look a little bit better. There are all kinds of other case prep things you can do if you want to get down into the nuances. If you're very, very much a uh, accuracy minded and you want to get the last bit of accuracy out of your hand loads and your rifle, you can do all sorts of other things. But for us today, this is just fine. That's, uh, yep, they're looking pretty good. We've trimmed and prepped our brass now on this Lyman gear, the nice trimmer and the hand tool. And we're going to move on to additional reloading steps in the next videos. I'd encourage you to check those out. What I want to know though is what are you using to trim and prep your brass? How are you doing it? Are you adding any other steps in? Drop a comment and we'll have a discussion. And that concludes this video and it's time to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, where we've got unrestricted content and Instagram, make sure to follow us on all those channels. Ultimate Reloader also has a commercial solutions division serving law enforcement, the military, and the gun industry. We have some unique capabilities, including a comprehensive suite of recoil testing and evaluation capabilities, trigger profiling, and more. If you're interested in custom rifles like what we build here on the channel or gunsmithing services, you're gonna to wanna to go to rifles.ultimatereloader.com and get on the wait list. If you're interested in becoming a professional gunsmith, check out the Sonoran Desert Institute. They've got a degree program, they've got a certificate program, and you can study from home. Learn more at sdi.edu. Thanks again for watching.